I have an important message for a select few. That's not all of you. This is for a select few of you guys that are listening or watching this. It's for trade business owners that have been around for a while. They understand the frustrations of marketing and being in control or not being in control. <laughs> guys, it's 2021 and many of you are marketing yourselves like it's the year 2000. Off the back of a global pandemic, we've seen huge shifts in the market with people turning to service providers they know, like, and trust. There's never been a better time to establish the tools and frameworks in your business to take advantage of these things. These things that will serve you not only now, but serve the business ongoing. Over at Trady Web Guys, we've recently launched the Elevation Program. It equips businesses with the tools and the programs required to successfully market themselves. It gives you tools to re-engage with your past and present clients whilst nurturing potential clients. It creates assets in your company's name with like no proprietary licenses. You own these things 100%. It gives your business a huge head start on the search engines with advanced SEO, and it collates all of the programs and all the services you need into one neat little bundle, including things like web development, website management, email marketing, SEO, Google Ads, loads of different softwares, strategy, support, and a bunch of other things. After going through this program, you'll have all the tools you need to market your business ongoing. You'll have a huge head start in, in your marketing and you'll also have a CRM so you can continue to build your database whilst engaging your current customers and, and re-engaging those customers that you've essentially forgotten about. Marketing tools that you need and they, they, they'll all be in your control. You don't owe anyone anything. You'll be able to dial it up and down essentially as you see fit. So why is this an important time to talk about this? Guys, it's important to know a lot about a little and a little about a lot. Meaning, you want to be in control. You want to know enough to be dangerous. I'm not trying to give you more work here. Essentially, we'll set everything up for you, teach you the basics, and then it's all yours. It's complete transparency. You'll never grow a business past a certain point without marketing. Word of mouth will, mouth will only ever get you so far. We've spoken about it on the podcast a lot of times. At some stage, you need to invest in these things. This is the simplest and most affordable way to do it. For more information, head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash elevation fill in the form, and let's make 2021 the year that you took control. Today's podcast has been proudly brought to you by Trady Web Guys. Trady Web Guys work with tradespeople only on their websites and marketing solutions to help them stand out from their competition. Everything from web design through to SEO, search engine marketing, content creation, you name it, guys. It is a customized solution for trade-based organizations, and it's fantastic. Head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash apply, fill in the form, and let's have a conversation. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the Sideshed Podcast. Good afternoon, Matt. How are you, sir? Very well. Afternoon there. Morning there. Morning here. It's just uh, easiest for us to say hello these days because I'm never quite sure on time zones. You're in lovely Colorado. Yes. Yeah, just uh, southeast of Denver. Beautiful part of the world. <laughs> Love it here. It's a great place to be from, a great place to be. And a wonderful place for, for those to visit. If you haven't yet, all you listeners and viewers out there, I encourage you to go check it out. Amazing mountains. Yeah, beautiful. And Chris, you're from bdrco.com, yeah? Yes, yeah. It's uh, Business Development Resources is, is the, the true name of it, but uh, our acronym on our website is bdrco.com or BDR. We're a uh, coaching and consulting company. Our yep. headquarters is actually out of Seattle, Washington, and we've got coaches all across the country, all across the United States. I shouldn't say the country because it's an international podcast, but uh, all over the United States. So now we have many, 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 many listeners and viewers in the United States, so they'll be glad to hear this, I'm sure. And tell us, what are you what are you joining us on the show today to discuss? A couple things we want to talk about. We're just uh, kind of leading your leading your team effectively. How to do that? How to work with people? How to how to get them in line behind you or help help push you at times and sometimes we have to push them, but how do we do that and how do we do it effectively and how do we know where we're going? Sure. So who are we typically speaking to? Is this a management meeting or is this for people to sit their team around and say, listen to this? 
It, I think it can be anybody and, and everybody, primarily business owners and business managers and, and someone running a department or something like that. But but it could be anybody because as, as someone who's been both an employee and a manager and a vice president with different companies and doing what I do now, I always wanted to know where we were going. So as an employee, just as important to me, know where we were where we were headed to as much as it was as a manager to be able to communicate that back to my team. It's interesting, isn't it, how that landscape's shifted over the years where, I mean, even back when I had a job shutter 10 years ago or whatever it was, you know, that there was a lot of secrecy around those goals and directions, you know, and, and some horrific communication uh, when it did come to surface about why we were achieving these goals and what was potentially going to be offered as a reward to us as a result of hitting it. But I won't go into that. But I think now there's so much more transparency in that space. And like even just that conversation around being able to highlight to your team members how they can reach their goals through working in your business, you know, that's such a powerful thing because it just really puts things in perspective for them. Oh, if I can do this, this, and this, I can have my Ducati or whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it is, it is, it's, it's kind of funny. It used to be, you're right, 10 years ago. And, and I've been in the industry now, I hate admitting this out loud because it gives me an idea how old I am, but I, I've been in the HVAC world since June of 1990. I got out of the Marine Corps. I did four years in the United States Marine Corps. I got out and, and went to work for an HVAC contractor as a laborer, you know, do what we tell you to do and you'll sure. be just fine. And 31 years later, I'm still doing this. So it's worked out extremely well for me, but cool. but it was, you, you didn't know what the goals were, or where we were headed until you were off track. And then someone wanted to come hitch in the head and get you back online. And it's it's changed a lot, and I'm I'm thankful it has. I mean, I, I think it's a I think it's a good thing to know what our mission is and our vision and our values and where we headed. And as importantly as all that, it's what's in it for me. You know, when we get there, what do I get? Sure. Do you think a lot of Do you think a lot of those that those disciplines that you you spoke about have come from the military background? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I I learned a lot while I was in the military on on what to do and how to do it and how to kind of stay in line when you needed to. But but that did come from part of that, and then. Part of it just being in different industry, being in the HVAC industry, but working for different managers and different companies and kind of figuring out what we needed to do. Cool. What are those? And so some of the pain points that we're going to try and address in this uh, podcast, Chris, are going to be focused what around the communication and, th- and those things that we spoke about, I suppose, like in relation to communicating where the business is going and you know what role people's people are going to play in it and what's in it for them and those kind of things. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And communication is a huge one. And anytime you talk to anybody, if you ever say, you know, what's, what's wrong or what can we do better? Most people say, oh, we could communicate better. Well, what does that really mean? You know, there, yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot to that. Certain generations of people, they, they only want to be communicated with via email. Right. Some of us are more, I, I, I'm a, I'm a communicator. I like to talk. <laughs> so it's probably a good thing. I'm a head coach in training and, and able to do podcasts, I guess, but you know, I, I'd rather do that than, than text message or email, which is right. easier for I have a 13 year old daughter. I, she'll text message or whatever app she's using. And I'm like, Hey, why don't you just call her? And you know, it's like, why don't you call her? And she won't, she'll text every single time. So yeah. communication varies based on who we're talking to and, and how they receive the message. Right. That's a, that's probably one of the biggest things. And, and one thing that uh, I think is incredibly important, a little off topic, but it, it, it comes back to what we're doing and where we're going is getting people to get it, get them assessed, some, some kind of personality assessment, find out how mm. they think, how they want to be communicated with, how do they hear the message? And a big part of that too is, is get yourself assessed. It's good to know how do we communicate and maybe what are we missing or how do we want to hear the message back? I think it's a, it's a huge part of that. Yeah, that's actually massive. That was probably the turning point for, I mean, I wasn't even going into, I wasn't in business at that point, but that was the turning point, I think, for me when I was given a book by a a mentor, now friend, probably 15 odd years ago, and it was a personality profiling book. And it made me understand why I piss people off so much. And it was it was such a turning point for me because I, I, I immediately from reading that book, I was like, this is why I'm not, I don't. I can communicate with some people and not others. And I was able to fine tune that, you know, and it was an amazing revelation. And then he gave me another book, which was speaking, which was talking about, you know, like how people respond to different things. um, Like they call it love languages, but essentially it's about how you can communicate with people in a way that resonates with them. And I think for any business owner, it was such a powerful thing, understanding what type of personality you're dealing with, because you can really dial that conversation accordingly. There's so many of them. I mean, those, you know, there's the, everyone's heard of disc profiling and right. like that whole thing I, from memory, it dates back to a Greek mythology, which goes back three or 4,000 years. And everyone's had a spin on it since then. But 
Um, I don't really think it matters specifically which one you you um, you decide to read into. Just start reading into them because they're fascinating. It's amazing. Yeah, just, yeah. P- pick one and use it, right? But but use them. That's that's. And I didn't know that. Right. right? Look that up about Greek mythology tying all the way back to the disc. I didn't know that. That's where that. Came yeah, from. it's it, obviously it wasn't disc back then, but it was. <laughs> you know, that it, it's actually incredible. There's a there's a a great book about Greek mythology by a guy called Stephen Fry, who's quite a very well known author and actor and British actor. I can't think of the name of the book offhand, but it's it's a fascinating book on. It's called Mythos. M Y T H O S. But it, it, it's a fast, it's, this is completely off topic. But if for any of you guys out there that are listening to this, and I, I did listen to this as an audio book because it was just, it's just incredible to learn how much of what we do today and what we know today has stemmed from foundations like Greek mythology and ancient Rome and ancient Egyptians and beyond, even further back. You know, like it's just, it's mind boggling. So if you really want to get a good understanding of where a lot of what we do today comes from, some of those, you know, some of those old mythologies and things like that is basically is the basis of it all, you know, especially astrology, astronomy, um, that kind of stuff. Like, it's really fascinating. Oh, I'll, I'll look at that. Thank you. And, and I think I've heard of the book. Is it called The Love Languages or Five Languages? The Five Languages? Love Languages. Brilliant book. And for all you listeners and viewers out there, you, you'll be thinking that sounds like an absolute chick flick of a book. And when you get it, you order it and it comes in this purple cover with like love hearts and stuff on it and you think there is not a hope in hell i'm going to read this book and it's absolutely fantastic and it i can tell you now if you if you want to win the misses over reading that book is going to absolutely win you some brownie points uh, you, you just trust me go and read the book get a listen to you guys and then come back to me and tell me uh, what you were able to do to score some brownie points with the with the cheese and kisses yeah um but yeah i have a real agent I'm, I'm friends with him and he just recently recommended that book to me so i that's the second time i'll have i now i have that, to do something. now you have to read it there you go yeah. well I'm, I'm you go read it and let me know what you think i'm keen to yeah and the, and the other book that i can hand on heart so it changed my life was personality plus by a lady called florence litauer again it's about personality profiling but more so more so about understanding your, your own personality traits strengths and weaknesses and being able mm-hmm. to communicate effectively to people you know accordingly so and, then, yeah. and that's what it's all about though right it, it, at the end of the day it's all about communication and how do you give the message and how do, how do other people receive it and if they're giving you something back if it's feedback good or bad how do i receive the message you sure know? and uh, I, I was listening to uh i'm a big fan of jocko willink um yeah the navy seal and all that stuff and uh, but but he talks about uh, normal face right so it, so when someone does give you bad news how do you respond to that yeah. you know and be aware of that because if if I freak out every single time, my team's going to be a whole lot less likely to give me that information. I'm going to find it out anyway. Right. But if I can normal face or kind of <laughs> internalize it first, that's a big thing. You know, so yeah. it, it's knowing who we are and how do we respond. Like you said, one of the things that you picked up out of it was, was who am I and why am I an asshole some days, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of merit to something I learned. And as like a high D person, when you're if you're relating it to disc, like you can you can be very reactive, <laughs> and, and that's an ongoing battle for me to try and tune that. But understanding that that's my tendency, then it really enables you to keep it under control to a degree. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. qualify. My wife might disagree with that, but and and I'm the same way. I mean, my I wear my emotions on my sleeve, right? Is one way to put it. And you you can read me like a book. It, it's very easy to know exactly what I'm thinking and feeling. You know, so it, it took me some time sometimes to learn, to learn how to dial that back a little bit and maybe not give away all the cards right up front. And, the, uh, but like you say, the power of it really comes when you're trying to, you know, communicate things to, you know, other people. I mean, obviously understanding and, and like you said, being able to, or was it straight face? What did you say? Blank face? Normal face. Normal face. Normal face. Yeah, yeah, which essentially means uh, respond, don't react. And that's, right. you know, that's been an important lesson over the years for me. And I <laughs> encourage you guys out there that like to fly off the handle that anything that happens, try responding, not reacting. So, yep. And and I a little trick that I learned a long time ago is I mean not that I've had to really implement this in a long time now but you know in relation to maybe an email conversation which is a bickering email conversation or whatever write the email sit on it for write the email then go back and read it the next day before you send it 
but don't send yeah. it straight away. And geez, geez yeah. that made a big difference to me. Yeah. And to this day, I've still I've still got a, a 90 second delay on my email sent <laughs> in case I want to <laughs> delete what I've said just in case. But there's little things yeah. you learn. Let's call it wisdom, shall we? That is that is a big one. Yeah. And most of us gain wisdom because we got hit in the head more somewhere along the way. If we do something the wrong way the first or second or third time, and sometimes it's a, sure. how it goes. But you're right, that's a big one. And that is a huge one for, for uh, written communication. Because once it's out, it doesn't come back. Sure. You know. So I, I'm a big believer doing the same thing. Let it sit for a minute, even overnight, and then then hit send. No, no, no New York reactions. It's interesting what you were saying before as well about the different mediums that people use today for communication, which is very heavily tied to demographics and things like that. You know, you've got these young kids that just want to, you know, send text messages or instant messaging or whatever. And I think for a, for a lot of the business, I mean, I mean, I know from even when I was, you know, 10 years ago running a, running a plumbing company, the, you know, the challenge there was keeping kids off their phones back then, you know, and now since then you've got, you know, all these there's a new hit app every five minutes, you know, that they're wanting to, you know, post things on and all this kind of stuff. The challenge back then was keeping them off their phones. And <laughs> I'm guessing it's yeah. probably pretty similar now, but then like you say, trying to communicate with them on a platform that they're, you know, they're going to respond on. I think that's a challenge for business owners because it's so often, I mean, I guess this is where policy comes into place to a degree, right? I mean, I'd love to hear your, your feedback on this because you can't obviously, and it's stupid to implement everything. I mean, I know with our business, we have multiple mediums. We run everything through through Google Workspace, which has Google Chat. It has Google Meet, which is like the Zoom for Google. So we can kind of cover it. So if you want an instant message, send a Google chat. It's exactly like a text message, whatever. If you want to, you know, obviously we have email. We don't really use that a lot. We we communicate on projects strictly through project management and through Google chat if we need to. But it's all just pot kind of like we've got a little ecosystem there of tools which we communicate in. And like my team knows, don't send me a WhatsApp. I'm not going to answer, your, you know, a message in WhatsApp. Like this. So it, it kind of works well, I guess. Is, how do you attack that with, you know, tech on the technician front? It's tough on that side. I mean, because we're the same way at BDR. We function, everything we do is within within Microsoft of some sort or another, whether it be Microsoft sure. Office or Dynamics 365 or Teams. Sure. So we do the same, we do a video chat. We had a meeting this morning, all on Microsoft Teams, all across the country. You all get together and it kind of feels like you're in the same room for a little while, you know? And But it's different when you're in the field or when you're trying to deal, even with your own employees, right? Is getting them to focus and, and I think pay attention. And I... And it's hard, like in the field, you look at it and it's a great tool. You know, we had iPods for all my guys, my last company I worked for. We, we used to come out to all of our, I shouldn't say just guys, we have female service technicians too, but all across the board, you know, everybody's got an iPad now and you can look up all your wiring diagrams. You can troubleshoot with it. You can, yeah. you know, you can get on FaceTime with someone and say, hey, here's the noises it's making. What do I do now? You know, yeah. so it, it's, a, it's a great tool for that. It's a great resource, but man, what a huge time waster if you're not careful. Sure. And that's I think it's a matter of just managing what it is. And we ran a report every month to find out how many minutes our guys were on the phone. And, you know, <laughs> you, you take that back to but But it, part of that was getting to understand, hey, you realize you spent 600 minutes on the phone. Yeah. Okay, what does that mean? What well, means you're on the phone for 10 hours? You 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 yeah. lost an entire day just talking on the phone. I mean, and, and getting people to understand that was was tough. I mean, and it's, then of course, they just text message or do whatever. There's always a way around it if you want to, but it's- uh, I think I think when it, this is something that I really want to dive into because I think this is a really important thing that I've learned over the years. When you, like when I can say, that, like you just said then, you spent 600 minutes on the phone this month. And they're like, okay, <laughs> what does that mean? Right. And then you can say, but, but then like while we're talking about communication and while we're talking about, you know, getting your team to buy into- and understand what the ramifications are or what those, you know, what the ripple effects is of them spending, you know, 10 hours or whatever it is on the, on their phone. Okay, well, what that means is that you're now this much further away from achieving that thing that you wanted because you, this time has been essentially, and maybe it's not wasted as well. It may be that, I know if you're a sales girl, that might be a KPI for you. <laughs> Spend as much time on the phone as you can. You know? So you kind of got to right. gear, gear the conversation the right way. But the point being like what understand, under, understanding how it looks in the bigger picture, you know? So a colleague of mine recently had an issue. Yep. A colleague of mine runs a uh, IT company and uh, sorry, it's a, it's a computer software, hardware distribution company. And he was saying he has issues with his team members being on their phones, but mm -hmm. they need to be on their phones because if people come into the store, they need to be able to show them things and all this kind of stuff. And so the solution there that, you know, when I was chatting to him that we came up with was, well, why don't you come up with a policy, get them buying into it, make them understand 
why it's important when people come into a shop that the first thing they see is not you on your phone, but it's you greeting the person, having a conversation with them, like coming up with a framework that involves them so that they want to, you know, that if, you know, typically if you want someone to follow something, get them to help you design it. You know what I mean? Like instead of, because then it goes from being an order to be something that they've come up with and it's like, oh, I'm invested in this, you know? So yeah, that's it. Exactly. I mean, and that's, and that's probably the biggest part is get them to understand it's okay if you're on your phone on occasion doing something personal, we all, we all have it. But what impact does that have? And you're right. If you help, if your team helps you develop that policy, what a huge way to do that. Because now it's collaborative. They own part of it. So they're a whole yeah. lot of like buy-in as opposed to you just coming in saying, there's the new policy. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay, fine. They're going to listen to you for about five seconds. So you turn your back and they're going to go back to doing what they were doing before. I mean, and the thing is as well, like for the better part, I mean, in this situation, especially, and certainly for you guys out there with technicians on the road, like you can come up with this, you know, policy which you think is going to be, or you know, is going to solve these problems, and all it's going to do is create headaches because you're not out there on the, doing the work. You don't really understand a lot of the obstacles that they're running into daily, and so by not involving them, you're really doing the policy a discredit because you're not getting it down at the ground level. You know, you're not in the trenches with that policy, and you really want to be. It's, and it's, there's so much merit in getting team members to be in charge of policy creation, system creation, that kind of thing. Because, it, you know, as I say, like when they're in there doing the work, they've got a way better better idea of what's going on than you do. You're sitting in an office for all oh, – you're sitting in an office drinking lattes. That's what they think you do. <laughs> that, is, that is what they think. As I sit here drinking a coffee. Yeah, I know. I get my water too. So, But, <laughs> but that's the other sad thing about leading your team though is, is, is get out of your office and spend time in theirs. And it okay. doesn't matter if – what their role is. It doesn't matter if you're the salon manager, go spend time with them out there while they're working with the client. If you're you know, in the HVAC or plumbing world, go spend time with them in their truck. Go spend time with them on a job site or in someone's home. You've got to get out of your office and go spend time in theirs. When, yeah. when I started doing that, it made a huge difference. One, because I had a couple of technicians come in my office one day and say, you know, Chris, what is it you really do? And it's because <laughs> you're always like that, pouring over something, right? And stressing out. And I started spending time out in the field and, and Guess what? All that stuff that was on your desk, it's still there when you get back. It ain't going anywhere. But your employees are, right? Because ultimately, that's that's who's impacting your customers, and that's who's impacting your bottom line. So if you really want to lead your company and lead your folks right and grow it, get out and spend time in their office. I mean, get out of your own, you know? (laughs) I know a lot of guys do do that. I'll do ride-alongs and I know from even from any business, there's so much merit in just spending a bit of time in other roles to, because what, it, I mean, my friend, Darren McCavan, he's been on the show a number of times. He's, he runs a kitchen making business in, in Sydney and he, until COVID, he was spending eight months a year traveling wow. and he had his systems just dialed in and his team hated it when he was back because basically what he, he would do, what you just said, he would go straight back into the factory. Like he would never really go back into the office side of things. He'd go straight back on the floor and he would improve process and he would just shake shit up and then he'd <laughs> leave again. And so, but like there's so much merit in doing that because if you don't, and I know I do it as well, like you know, maybe you got like a staff member that's going away for a week, and so you got to fill in a role while mm-hmm. while she's away. And while you're in that role, you're like, oh, why don't we try doing this, this, and this to improve the way this process works? Or you know, and I mean that that could be true to any any area of business. You know, getting getting in there and trying to see how you can improve. I mean, process can always be improved, right? Always. So, yeah. Um, yeah, what, de- one of our one of BDR's core values is you know, change is essential. We will always embrace it. Right. right, and that's. I mean, if if you're not trying to constantly improve, you, your competition is, and they're going to run right over the top of you. Sure, yeah, and hasn't COVID brought that to light? I mean, you know, for years and years, we've been telling people through the podcast, and you know, our, our clients directly at our, at our digital agency, you know, all these cool, you know, apps and solutions and cloud based blah blah blah, and you know, all this sort of stuff, and you know, shut your office down because you don't need it. No, no, I need our people to see. All of a sudden, COVID hits, bang! They're like, oh, what was that? You know, all the Tell me again about all these things. Like it's if you're not on the edge of that sort of stuff and you're not receptive to it, then you know it, it can take a global pandemic to. <laughs> yep. You don't want it to take a global pandemic to you know bring these things to fruition within your organisation. But the point being, be receptive. You know, like there's so many cool alternatives potentially to the way you're doing things. And I, I say that with caution. You know, you don't want to be in that situation where you're constantly changing 
project management software or you're constantly changing, you know, you know, your email providers or whatever it is, but like be be receptive to what's available, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think change just for the sake of change isn't going to do much good. It, you'll, just, you'll wear your people out and they're, they're going to go someplace else. But change for the, with, a, with a good intent and for a good reason, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, if you're intentional with it, I think that's a win. Communicate it to your team, though. Again, they have to know what's coming up and why. Sure. And, and you said get their buy-in with it and, and the with them. What's in it for me? Well, when we do this, this is what you're going to get out of it. This is what our goal is. It's to make this process a little more streamlined. And then guess what? If we're going to try it. And if I'm wrong, hey, I'll own that mistake. We're going to make another decision and keep moving forward. You know, but, yeah. but if we're right, it just makes us all that much better. And the thing is, I think as well, like there's really no, like when it comes to that sort of thing, like you say, you don't really know. So by trying something different, I mean, it's like what we do, right? When you look at the digital landscape or people's websites, you know, or marketing even, if you're running a split test with marketing, you don't know. You're running a split test based based on you know you know data and experience, but you don't really know until the test is out there. So it's not really a fail. I mean, sure, one of them has to come second place, but it's not really a failure because you're learning so much and you're being able to double down on what's working. So I think that's like a paradigm that guys really need to get their head around. It's it's in when you're in that space of trying to optimize and improve everything, which you should be. Don't look at it as, you know, a failure per se. It's more a fact of, well, we're just trying to like smart learn here. We're trying to see what's, you know, and sometimes it might be the way you've done things for 15 years is the best way to do it. But very rarely, I would suggest. Yeah, yeah no, because so much stuff has changed. I mean, technology is light years ahead of where we used to be. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's more power in your pocket right now on a lap in your in your phone than there used than there was that put guys on the moon. I mean, sure. <laughs> You know, so if we're not adapting to that technology, we're we're just going to get run over by the competition, and and that's not a win, you know, because it ultimately we want to be the pace setters. So sure, and and there's a fine line between like embracing and overcomplicating, and you know, you can you can certainly get into technology paralysis, you know, in a lot in a lot of instances. But and again, I encourage guys to try and keep things simple, but still be receptive to what's out there, you know, and understand what it does and how it may help and how other people are using it. Um, it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that you need to adopt it, and and sometimes right. it may not be worth adop- you know adopting it. I mean, I, we look at I look at things like this myself. Like even you know we use Loom, which is a video recording software to communicate with with customers, and we do it in, use it internally and all this kind of stuff. And you know, there's alternative products that pop up on you know AppSumo or whatever, and I'm like, I, I could buy this, and it would be a better it, it would save the business money, but like. It's going to be such an ordeal in order to move everything from what we've got over to there. It's just not worth doing. So yeah. you know, the, I know there's better solutions, but it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. You know, the, yep. the payoff isn't big enough. So and and part of that too is as an owner or manager is is learning how to check yourself at the door. You know, check your ego a little bit and be willing to listen. Right? Yeah. You may you you can hire someone new to your team, whether they're in this industry or coming from somewhere else or brand new to it, and go. You know what? Let's try this. And if you're not willing to listen to that, you may lose out on something that, that could have been a total game changer for you. Yeah, I mean, sure. You know, and, and again, knowing your own personality and how you communicate and how you receive that message is a big part of that. I mean, and be willing to listen. And if you've got a if you've got a blind spot in your own personality or how you do things, make sure you backfill that. You know, bring somebody in who's better and smarter than you are so they can help you with those blind spots. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm curious how that conversation looks actually when we're talking about like frame, like helping people through your business achieve what they what they want to achieve. Like, what does that look like within within your within Bidiaco? How does that conversation yeah. fabricate? Yeah. So I, I I'm very fortunate. I, I work for uh, I, I have a, a great boss who who uh, has always been more than I shouldn't even say boss, but I have a great manager that I work for, leader that I work for, and everybody within BDR is. But if if I want something, I'll, I'll go to them. We do we do monthly one on ones, so we have a formal one on one meeting. Now, of course, it's it's in this format, right? Because I live Colorado, she lives in California. But we have those conversations, and we have those conversations about what do we want? What do, what do I want? She'll flat out ask me, Chris, what do you want from us? What do you want from BDR? Where do you want to go with the company? Where do you want to go with your career from here? So we have those conversations. We talk about it, and we and we lay out a game plan, you know, to do that. And there's times that it, it shifts, right? I mean, probably in the five and a half years I've been here, it's, it's shifted a little bit. I wanted to move into the training side of our company. I'm able to do that. But when I was a, a manager at other companies, I did the same thing with my team. You know, I sat down with them and said, hey, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to make? You know, find out what, what are their goals and dreams and aspirations, as silly as that sounds, but it works. And it's it's what people want. And the, 
the millennial generation kind of got a bad rap because they came in demanding that stuff. Right. And, and my generation wasn't used to that. We just, right. you know, you just did what you did and you just did it, you know, and that's changed a lot. And I'm, and I'm thankful for that, 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 that communication level has changed, but it don't be afraid to talk to your team. You got to have those one-on-one meetings. You got to ask them, what do you want? I mean, and, and help them fabricate a plan to get there. It's position descriptions as part of it. It's, it's your chart. It's your business plan. It's, it's all those things that tie together. How do I align my company goals with yours? Because now you're going to want to stick around with me. You're going to want to stay with me through the long haul. Yeah. And, you know, every, every trade out there, whether it be the restaurant industry right now or construction or lands, every, we all struggle finding people, you know. And sure. Yeah. When you get them, make sure they're going to stick with you. You know, help them lay out a game plan to want to be with you hopefully forever, you know, I mean, yeah. but, it, but if you don't start by talking to them, you're never going to get there. So that's like, so that's one thing we do is we do monthly one-on-ones. We talk about it. Where do I want to go? What do I want? And, and let's build a plan to get there. It's interesting. I know, I don't know if you've ever crossed paths with Al Levy, the seven power contractor. I don't know if you've read his book, but he's, great. he's an awesome guy. He's based in Arizona. He's like, that had something he taught me years ago through the podcast was if you, the difference between, you know, having an employee, stick with you or jump ship to a competitor for an extra five bucks an hour is you being having the ability to offer them a career path. Mm -hmm. Just basically exactly what you just said then. This is where you are in the org chart. This is where you can end up. This is what we need to do to get you here. If you get here, this is what you'll be able to, this is what you'll be able to make. This is the potential, you know, your KPIs, you know, this is, and then this ties into you being able to buy what you told us, you'll, you know, these, your dreams and goals and whatever they are, buy your house, whatever it is. Like, and that was such a powerful thing because it really, it really put into perspective for a lot of the guys out there why they have so many issues retaining stuff. I mean, because they were like you say around the globe in probably certainly in tra- trades and construction. There's always been for as long as I can remember, an issue with yeah. finding the right people and building the right team. And there's always that one company that just seems to have this crazy retention and the staff love showing up, you know? Yeah. And, and, they, got, and they got guys, be, they, they have tradespeople beating down their doors. They want yeah, to come to work. Exactly. Because they've created a culture that that aligns with their values, you know? That sure. One, the company knew where they were going. They had an owner who was a visionary or managers were visionaries and, and knew where they wanted to go. They laid out a game plan to get there and they knew they couldn't do it by themselves. Yeah. So they got to attract talent. They got to attract the right team to do that. And you align their goals with yours and you almost can't be stopped. Right. I mean, yeah. It, that is like, you know, that's a really foreign concept to, you know, guys that are just used to laying drain, you know, installing drains, switchboards and, you know, hammering yep. nails in, you know, like that, that's like a real different conversation. And it's something that yep. you don't get taught at technical college, you know, like you've, oh. you've really got to, and to be fair, we're preaching to the choir here because people are listening and watching this podcast are people that are, you know, super open and probably doing a lot of this stuff anyway. But, you know, for the guys that, you know, this is new to guys that are starting up a business. They're like, well, I'm a good carpenter. Sure. I can run a business. You know, <laughs> this is. No, and, and there are a lot of them out there. There are a lot of folks out there that were great at their trade and, and are great owners and great managers. They, they're out there. Absolutely. But a, but a lot of them aren't. They were great at one part of them, not necessarily the, la- the next part, but that's where, again, don't be afraid to hire smarter than you, right. Or better than you at a certain part of your business. Cause that's the only way you're going to grow it is, is don't be afraid of that. And, and do that, but it, it is a big part of it. And, and I'm very fortunate when working for BDR and a, a shameless plug here, but you know, we, we created a class called creating the next generation of company managers. And that's nice. fortunate if I get to lead that class and that's what it's all about. It, it's, it's in between two and three days, depending on the format, but that's what we talk about is what, what are those things we need to do to elevate ourselves and elevate our team to step into that next role? Yeah. And I mean, no one follows that stuff. I mean, except hard knocks. <laughs> And that is like, that's a big thing, you know, like developing management, develop, developing leadership. Like I know for the better part, most of the, the people that we're speaking to here would rather do that internally, you know, develop somebody because, you, you know, you're bringing, up, bringing them up with your processes, the way that you work, you know, your environment. And for the better part, and mostly the guys are wanting to train them into that position, you know, and, and further develop internally. It's sometimes hard when you're bringing in like, a manager, somebody who's got experience, and all of a sudden they're bringing in all the way they want to do things into your organization, which doesn't, you know, doesn't always gel with the way the company's your company oh, yeah. might run. You know, well, they'll, they'll, yeah. They'll, if, if you're not careful, they'll crater your culture. They'll 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 destroy your company for you. 
Now, that being said, there's also some great ones you can do. You can bring in, you know, an infusion of new light or new breath into the company. You can do that too, but, but be aware of it and make sure they're going to be a good fit. But it, I'd much rather grow our own team. You know, we talked a minute ago about how hard it is to find people. Well, you got to hire for attitude and aptitude. We can't yeah. necessarily hire for length of time in the industry anymore because they're, they're just not out there. We got to yeah. be able to bring in that next group of folks. And, you know, but if, if, if you come in to me with an open heart and open mind and, you know, be willing to listen and be willing to grow, man, I'll go to the end of the earth for you. I mean, yeah, exactly. And that's the only place we're going to find people there. You, you get the ones that come to you with 10 years worth of experience. That's great. They got a little bit of, you know, knowledge on their backpack, but man, they got a whole suitcase behind them full of all the crap you don't want to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely that conversation around attitude is, is, I mean, I, you hear it all the time. Like I've got that many clients and people in our community that have told us stories about how they've had to let their most experienced technician or project manager or foreman go because they just utterly refuse to do things they want the way that they want them done in their business. They just do things the way they've always done it and, and they, they won't be told otherwise, you know. And I've had to let them go. And like sometimes these guys might be the most profitable, you know, the, the biggest sales rep in their company. They might be the most experienced leading hand or the most experienced site supervisor or whatever, but they just create this like, like the rotten apple, you know. You know, that it's and it just drags culture down, and you know, and then the team sort of looks at them as leaders and follows them in their direction instead of the way you want things to go, and all this sort of stuff happens, you know, and it's it's a tough pill to swallow. Sometimes you got to axe the axe the dude at the top, well, or or they run off all the people you've been you spent so much energy trying to bring on board, they keep running them off for you, right? You, know, you look at that and go, how come we're why why are we losing as many as we're gaining, and find out what that common denominator is, and make a change. I mean, Ironically, if you do all this stuff right from the beginning, you'll never have that situation because you would never have let it get that far. But, you know, for a lot of, and probably the majority, to be fair, um, you know, this is a new, a new, quite relatively different new concept. So, you know, they're trying to, you know, take what we're talking about here and, and add it to an existing structure and existing business or whatever. And, you know, that's, that's always a lot harder than trying to build something from the ground up, you know? Yep. Yeah, um, and, and that's the cool part. I mean, any, any organization can change and pivot, right? I mean, and you know, start with one department. If you're a huge company, already just start with one department at a time. You know, sure. journey of a thousand miles, right? I mean, yeah. So, but it, uh, yeah, but it, it can be a lot of fun too. I mean, it is a lot of fun. I mean, I we're blessed to be in the trade. We we found out, you know, what 14 months ago that we were an essential industry. We knew it all along. We just kind of confirmed it to everybody else that we're essential, and you know, we we had to be a part of the solution. Oh, yeah, it was a big thing. So yeah, exactly right. There's, I mean, we sort of, we, I mean, I feel like every 15 years we relearn it. You know, the last time was the global financial crisis, and sure, this situation, the the semantics are a little significantly different. You know, but it's the same, same. Like we're always going, trades are always going to be in demand for, and 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 again, what I suppose what's different about this current climate is, you know, the there's been businesses have been forced into changing process. They've had to mm-hmm. all of a sudden take what was has traditionally been for the last 15, 20 years in their run in their organization, you know, face-to-face transactions with cusp with clients. They've been forced to change that. They've been forced to adopt Zoom meetings. They've been forced to, you know, now now take payment through, you know, re- remotely through app apps on their on their devices or whatever it might be. Yeah. Like all of these things, which is just adding an a, an additional layer of awesomeness to their business, but they've never done it because they've never had to, kind of thing. So again, it sort of forced the hand on them, and the you know the businesses that have sort of embraced that change have been the businesses that have come out of this more streamlined uh, with better processes in place, with better team morale, with better policies, with less overheads, like all these serendipities that have come from it, you know? So, yeah, we, yeah, I did BDR last year. We, a vast majority of our clients all had record years last year. I mean, they adapted to the change. They moved on quick. They started offering new indoor air quality accessories, doing other things, but sure. helped me become part of this, even more part of the solution than ever before. And it was amazing what it did. I mean, Yep. Give people peace of mind. They let them know, you know, hey, look, I'm here to make sure that your environment is is better and safer than it was when I started. And it was a huge, it was huge what it did for me. And I mean, and even half the businesses, if you look at them on paper and you and you say, well, our turnover hasn't gone up a whole lot, but our profits increased significantly because we've shut our office down. We've got rid of the two people that were sitting in the office, and we've out and, and now we we outsource that those roles part time. Like the, you know, their profit margins have just gone up. You know, and this has happened to loads of uh, people that we speak with. You know, it's just it's just really put in the spotlight how much 
time, money, you know, and resource they were wasting on things that were just com- absolutely insignificant. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it'd be quite the wake up. Like you said, it's about every 13 to 15 years we kind of get it. You know? Yeah. What else should we talk about? I mean, I, 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 think, think, one, I, I think one of the other ones that, that uh, it, it's been talked about on, on other podcasts, I've listened to a number of years before I came online. And, uh, you know, I, I think a couple of things are, are, are the org chart. Again, it ties back to knowing where I'm at, you know, what are my goals? What are my roles? What's my responsibility? And, and how do I get to that next level? You know, if, if I want to lead people and let them know where we're going as a team, again, what's in it for me and where am I headed with you? But it, it but that's a big part of it is letting them know what it is. And I, I think that the org chart is a huge thing. It, it, in addition to letting people know where they're at, it lets them know who else to talk to in the company. Hey, if I have a question on X, Y, or Z, who do I go see? Yeah. I mean, that's been one of the biggest, I mean, I've spoken about this so often on the, um, you know, on the podcast, and we've actually even got a little mini course on this, which has been derived from speaking with, you know, dozens of experts over the years, like Al Levy and Danny Kerr and just all these amazing guys that have got such a good framework around it. But like, essentially understanding what your org chart looks like, understanding where, not so much where it is right now, but where you want it to be in 12 months and, you know, what positions you need to create what roles you need to create within those positions, what responsibilities lie within those roles, just documenting all of that because you're never, ever going to successfully offload that role or that position to somebody else if no. you don't have it documented. You, you just, it's just never going to happen. I've right. never seen it happen successfully. I've seen people, uh, and I've done this myself, I'm certainly guilty of it um, on numerous occasions, bringing people in to uh, fulfil a role or an obligation without strict or I won't say strict, but without a clear defining, you know, roadmap mm-hmm. of what it is they're supposed to be doing, you know, the, it's it's nearly in every instance fallen over, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, if you don't tell me what my responsibility, what my role and responsibilities are, how do I ever know if I'm achieving them? Sure. Either, either, I'm either way overdoing it or I'm not, or I'm way underdoing it. But if you didn't tell me what the expectation was, it's not shame on me for not knowing it. It's maybe not for asking, but it's shame on you for not letting me know exactly what you wanted from me. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and uh, we're never going to know if we don't. I mean, that, that's that's a huge part of that. And I think and, for a lot of the, a lot of the listeners and viewers out there, they'd be seeing why well, this is irrelevant to me. I'm a one man band with an apprentice, you know. And I just I would say it's probably more yeah. relevant than any anyone to you guys. And again, this is something that you you don't know and like you haven't been taught before, and so you're not expected to really understand it initially. But you know, don't glaze over with this kind of thing because if you ever have any aspirations of growing or bringing in team members, understanding these frameworks are paramount, you know, and understanding what the the power in building an org chart, even if it's two of you, even if it's one of you, if it's just you, okay, understanding, okay, well, the next hire I want to make is this. It might be, you know, a new technician or it might be you're getting a new truck on the road or it might be an office administration or whatever it is. You absolutely fundamentally have to have those roles, responsibilities, defined yep. within your org chart so you can process them out so people can come in and they can understand, you know, oh, okay, this is how I do my bank reconciliation. This is how I do my invoicing. This is how I follow up on quotes or whatever it is. So, you know, you've got to have those things in place. So I oh. certainly encourage you guys not not to glaze over when it comes to, when it comes to what, what we're talking about here because you might think that it's not relevant, but I can okay. promise you it's insanely relevant. Yeah, it's very relevant. And, and right now, you, you're right, when it, which just you and an apprentice or me, you know, yeah, the our chart looks like this. Me, <laughs> you know, you've got all the responsibility, but but every time you grow it, you got to add somebody else. You got to know what the expectation is, and and have a have a business plan, have an actionable business plan. You know, and that's one of the things we do at, at BDR every year. We we have a business planning seminar called um, Profit Launch. You know, we do it a number of times a year, and that's what it's all about. And, and part of it is we build out that three year and five year org chart. You know, when when we grow from three million to seven million in five years. What's that look like? What, what do I need to have on staff? Who do I need to hire for? What positions do we need? How many more trucks do I need to have on the road? And it may not be any. It may just be we do a better job with our transactions. And instead of running $800 transactions, we run you know seven $300 transactions or whatever. But we can grow that way a whole lot easier than we can just add in trucks, right? Be more efficient. But I can't do that if I don't know what I need on my team. It's, a, it's not going to happen. You know? And it's yeah. not going to happen by accident. Have a business plan. Know where you want to go. I've had like some. I've had a lot of mixed experience with business plans over the years. I must. I must be honest. I've had. Yeah. You know. I mean, these. I've just been part of these. You know, programs when I was starting up in business, and they're like, you've got to. You know, 
create this 20 page business plan. I was just thinking, this is the biggest waste of freaking time. Like it was, and it was, it was just insane. But why, why was it a waste of time though? What happened? It was just like, it was too complicated. It was something that you're never, ever going to go back to. And I never, ever did. And, you know, over the years, we, it got refined to like a simple one page business plan, which got broken down into, you know, into annual goals, which got broken down into quarterly goals, which got broken down into monthly co- targets, which got broken down into weekly tasks and daily tasks, you know, like, and then it was so much more digestible and so much more real then, you know? So well, I think I think a lot of people may have, like they may have had that experience with like the business plan, which is just so hard to re- relate to and just. Well, but it ties back though. It does tie back to what you said though, Matt. It, it takes it from this gigantic number and you did it in one page and that's totally cool. But you you took it down into from a monthly to a 12 month, to a daily, to a per call goal, right? Yeah. It was actionable at that point. It wasn't just this, you're right. It wasn't this big thick book that looked good on a bookshelf but it was an actionable business plan. So that's what I mean. You got to have something you can manage to yeah. identify what your goals are, those key goals for the year, know what you want to get done. I mean, and that's a big part of that. I mean, I mean it, there is like absolutely no question whatsoever that if you guys aren't strategizing and planning, you're just setting yourself up for, you well, well, I mean, I won't say you're setting yourself up for failure, but you, you're not working towards anything specific, you know, like you've got to understand what direction, what trajectory your business is on in order to, you know, be able to say, we have it, we're winning here. We, we're gaining, we're heading in the right direction. If you don't have that strategy in place, how do you ever know? So <laughs> yeah, you got to know what the scorecard is. I got to know if I'm winning or losing, right? I mean, and yeah, but if, if, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's a big part of that. And, and again, who, as an employee coming on board, or if I'm looking for someone that's going to lead me in, a, in the direction I hope to go, if you don't know where you're going, how am I going to know where you're going? You know, or, or, or do I really want to be part of a boat that just sits in the, or, you know, just sits and goes in a big circle? I mean, and I think for a lot of guys, that's what we're you know you're doing out there. You just you you're just doing businesses as usual, and you're just doing what's always been done, and expecting, and you're getting the same results. And it's because you're not really working towards like that macro picture, you know. And I encourage you guys just to take some time and doing that, and work with a coach to help you do it. You know, that's what they that's that's fun. That that is the crux of every coaching program I've ever seen: is strategy, yep. planning, and working towards goals. So yeah, and, and and accountability create create accountability, those positions. Yeah. Accountability or those those check in points or that accountability, and it goes the same. It, that that I'm fortunate enough as a coach, I get to do that. I get to help people. Yeah, you get to help hold them accountable to their goals. And and every company's goals are different. It doesn't matter if yours. They shouldn't be the same as somebody else's. They may be to grow to X number of dollars, and that's fine because that's gonna be somebody else's goal. But how you get there is your own journey. I mean, and but have have someone. It doesn't matter if it's a formal coach or somebody else. But have someone in your life that's gonna help hold you accountable to those goals. Sure. You know, where, where am I going every day? Because I, I expect you as an owner or manager to lead your team. You got to do the same thing for your team. You got to yeah. help find out what their goals are, what's important to them, and and how am I going to help you get there from here? I mean, and there's a lot, there's a lot of power as well in just even like getting getting those goals. If you want to make yourself accountable to something, write your goals down and post it on your Facebook page and tell and yeah. tell the world that you're doing it. Yep. And then see how shitty you feel when you don't. If someone calls you on it. <laughs> Yeah, when all your buddies call you out for it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's true. And most people won't do it because they're afraid that if they that's don't it. achieve it, then, you know, that's that's what they're going to be faced with, which is kind of the point. Yep. So, but, And unfortunately, too, there's a, there's a portion of, of us out there that sometimes we're afraid to succeed. You know, well, what if I do get it to that point? Then what? You know, so therefore, I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm going to stay with the one, me and one apprentice because yep. it's easy. I mean, and, you know, and, and, that's ultimately that doesn't help but you know we owe it to ourselves to be bigger and better than that i mean yeah absolutely you know i mean this, we could take this conversation could go for hours probably days when we start heading down different rabbit warrens that tie into these things like you know like accountability cr- habit creation and like all this kind of stuff again i think they're all leadership qualities that you should try and um distill on your on your team members you know and get them get them buying into these kind of things. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of going through this process myself at the moment, like trying to help the team members understand the power of, you know, being productive and, you know, not because I'm trying to, I suppose, maximise efficiency at their end, although I am, but like I really want them to, it's a life skill, you know, like if you can really manage, if you can learn to do this anywhere, you can take it with you any, anywhere as well, you know, like you can do, it's just it's so powerful. So 
you know, but like, again, it's training, it's communicating, it's like helping people understand the advantages of it from their perspective, not from your yeah. perspective. You know, this is why you need to stick to the, this is why you need to, you know, train three or four times a week, because if you don't, you know, you'll end up with diabetes or whatever it is. Like, <laughs> yep. but, you know, and one of the, you know, one of the fears of that is, you know, what if I train and they leave? Well, what if you don't train them and they, they stay? stay? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, all of a sudden I got a whole staff full of people that are a little behind the times and yeah, you got to train your folks. I mean, don't be afraid of that. I mean, and don't be bring in somebody else, bring in your, you know, in our HVAC industry, you know, bring in your territory manager, bring in your salesperson to, to help you get through that, you know, help them train on the new, the new products that are coming out. The, the first time your employees see a new product shouldn't be the day they're going out to a job site to install it. Sure. You know, spend some time with them ahead of time. And, and the other part, you know, when it comes to employees, you know, look up the term employee engagement, you know, spend some time on employee engagement and that's mm. getting your employees. It, it's aligning their goals with yours. You know, but you're not going to get there if you don't communicate it. You're not going to get there if you don't talk to them, you yeah. know, but that's all part of it. But it, it, it sounds like kind of a warm and fuzzy topic. And, and when I first heard about it and thought about it, I'm like, okay, well, here we go. And, and it wasn't when I get into it, it was kind of like your, the five love languages. Once I get into it and started looking at it, I'm like, <laughs> wow, this really makes sense to me. And again, it's, it's, it's our, you know, I'm in my fifties. So I guess I'll say my generation working with the next generations, you know, of getting everybody to be a little more in line with each other and do, you know, reward people and find out what they want and help them with all that stuff. Cause ultimately if, if their goals align with yours and they hit their goals, well, guess what? By default, you hit yours. I mean, sure. and that's, and at the end of the day, that's the win that's growing companies and growing people. And we're never going to lose by doing that. So mate, this has been a great conversation. As I say, I feel like we could go down many, many a rabbit rock warren here and end up yeah. and end up on tangents that we don't have time to cover today. But I think, I think essentially for me, the big takeaway for this is plan, strategize, you know, and, 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 and then make those plans, first of all, transparent to your employees, but certainly enable or communicate to them how, how these, these plans contribute to their goals and their, what they want to achieve. Yeah. And it may not be, let's grow to 10 million with a 20% net because they may not understand that, right? Or they may look at their own paycheck and go, wait, you put 2 million bucks in your pocket and I made 75,000. Well, that ain't right. 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 So, so some of those goals, you may leave a little more, a little more secret, a little more in silence or more you know, hidden, but let them know, man. If When we get to this point, I'm opening up a new service manager position and I'd love to see you fill it. You know? Exactly. How do I do that? And that's, yeah. and, that's and as a service manager, this is what's going to come with that. With that role, that this is your package, yep. this is your benefits, this is your KPIs, like just make people understand it, you know. And I think you really can't go far wrong with that. And yes, it does take time putting that framework into place. It does take time managing it. But like, God, the amount of time and grief it will save you in the long run is just formidable. So, yeah. Yep. So, yep. Mate, thank you so much for your time today. Just for the listeners and viewers out there, um, this is Chris Cook, but spelt C K O C H. So, yes, sir. Yep. Cook, but spelt Koch. And their website is bdrco.com. Uh, Chris's email is chris, K O C H, at bdrco.com. Yep. Yeah. And please reach out to me. If you got anything you want to talk about or reach out to me, if you've got a question on any of this stuff, by all means, that's what we're here for. You know, sure. And, and so you guys typically operate in that North American market or just, just, just the US? No, North America. I mean, yeah, we've got cool. some clients up in Canada and some of the things like that. So yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay, cool. So if you guys want to reach out to them, by all means, that's the details. But once again, Chris, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate all of your input. And I, I dare say there'll be a few conversations or questions that come out of this. So we may have to get you back on the show to recap. Awesome. That'd be my pleasure, man. I'd love to do that. Thank you. Appreciate well, it. And uh, I hope you get a surf in this afternoon. Oh, I will. <laughs> All right, right. listeners that's a wrap thank you for listening to another episode of toolbox talks if you're liking what you hear then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our toolbox talks uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades if you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, that would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.